Hey, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Joe Fam coming at you with a new video. I just want to talk about this really quick because I'm not too sure how I feel about this whole situation that they're doing. But the MPC-1 came out with a retro edition. Now, is this even necessary? Or is this even something to even talk about? Like, why did they come out with a retro edition for the MPC-1? And I know why they did it. Well, a good reason why they did do it. Because they made so much money off of the Live 2. Think about it. When they came out with the retro edition for the Live 2, they made a killing. So, so many people were ordering them like hotcakes. They were selling out of them really fast. So they're like, well, let's implement this into our other and let's put it into the MPC-1. Now people are like, well, now it's a $200 price difference. It's at $899. People are like I bought mine for $6.99. So is it really worth the $200? But remember back a couple months ago everything got jacked up in price about a hundred bucks from um, Akai and the music brand everything went up even the Denon Prom 4 when I bought mine I believe I bought mine for $16.99, $1,700. Now it's up to $18.99 So they jacked up the price on all their products from their live that went up uh, I believe even the X, I think the X stayed the same price, but the MPC one went up the um, Live 2 price went up, then the Denon Prime series, they also went up in price too. So everything went up. So now remember the MPC-1 went from $6.99 to $7.99. Now they have the Retro Edition, which is now $8.99. So yeah, technically it is $200 or more, probably what you remember. But really only went up an additional $100 because they jacked up the price. So a lot of people probably forgot about that. What I'm curious about is why they didn't do it with the MPC-X though, because you gotta think about it, the MPC-X is the flagship version, right? So why would you not make a retro version for the flagship? Because remember, there's so many original MPCs, 3000s, 20, 2000s, 2500 XLs, like there's so many models. So why wouldn't you make a retro version of the X? I think that would have been more sense maybe, but they figure maybe they wouldn't push as much or people wouldn't buy as many X's since it's already costly. So if it's already at $2,200 price to charge $2,300 for a retro edition, would it even sell? Personally, it probably would sell and I think it would sell more because it would look more iconic to the original NPCs because the NPCs were already big and bulky and heavy. So to have that type of look, you know, like the MPC 3000 and make that on the X, I think it would sell like crazy. I think people would probably be like, yes, this is awesome. I would want this. And now you got the other people that are disappointed because, disappointed, I'm sorry, that, um, you know, okay, cool, they're coming up with all these retro editions and they're doing that, but what about our updates? Like, we're still waiting on updates. Here's why I think they're really holding back on updates. One, because I think they're trying to perfect it, see what they want to do, and see what they want to put into 3.0. Um, I think they're going to, in. I think they are gonna go for that arrangement. If you already got into the force, it would make sense to put that in an MPC, and I wouldn't see why, I guess, they wouldn't do that. I mean, it makes sense to have that in an MPC, the arrangement. So that'd be cool if they do add that, which I think they will. But I think what they're really holding out for right now is because of Mac. And remember, Mac has got, you know, the M1 chip, and now they're gonna have the M2 chip coming out. So they're probably gonna want, okay, listen, Apple's coming out with all these different chips from the M1, the M2, or M1X, or whatever you want to call it, and all of our stuff is not going to work well with a big slur and everything, so I think they're more focused on that. I think they're going to be more focused on, okay, let's make our software compatible to even work on the new Mac systems, because Mac is a good deal now, and that's like getting killer, so for anybody in the music game, the video game, uh, the photo game, like anything for videographers, photographers, music producers, whatever, it's a killing. So I think they may be targeting that audience for the fact that, okay, I think a lot of producers, um, a lot of DJs, everything's gonna go out and buy these new Macs because they're so much faster, they can work really, really well. Granted, all the VSTs don't work. You still gotta use Rosetta on half of the things, but let's make sure that the MPC software can work on Big Slur. So there maybe won't be an issue. And if they get that to work, and they get additional VSTs and their own personal VSTs to work on Big Slur, instead of even using Rosetta. Uh, that's what I think they're probably focusing on, uh, which I don't think people are even thinking about because, like I said, a lot of software is, you know, a lot of them haven't done updates because they're trying to still see what's going on with the whole Apple game. Like I said, it's a whole different process. This is not just Intel. This is something totally different. So they have to adapt to that and make sure that their softwares and VSTs and everything else can work properly on the new Mac systems. And I think that's what they're aiming for and I think that's what they're going towards. And this is my personal opinion, what I think is happening. Let me know what you guys think below in the comments. Um, do you think the MPC-1 Retro Edition, you know, is it 
even worth picking up? Like, should you pick it up? Or, you know, if you haven't got an NPC yet, or maybe you do have one, and you're like, hey, I do is gonna pick up the one. Should I just get the retro edition? It's up to you. I mean, look, it's pretty sleek. It's pretty nice. It's pretty, um, you know, it is nice looking. It's cool. I do like how it looks a little bit better on the live, too. A little bit better. That's my personal opinion, once again. Um, but a lot of people are liking the look on the NPC one, and I'm surprised that they came up with that retro edition on that one and not the X. But I have a feeling that they may just throw it on the X. They may be like, hey, listen, we did it for all the other ones. We already did it for the live two. We did it for the one. Might as well just make an X version. Like, why not? Um, I think they would. Uh, I, I don't. Wouldn't be surprised. Like they'd be like, hey, 3.0 is coming out, and with 3.0, the new retro style NPC X is coming out. So instead of dropping a whole new NPC X product, uh, which some people are worried that they're gonna drop a whole new NPC X. Uh, flagship model, they may just be like, nope, we're just gonna throw a retro edition out for you and improve the software to 3.0. So that's a possibility once Apple and everything gets into it. Sorry about the glare. Uh, I just got off work, so I'm actually signing up for um, lessons. I'm gonna be teaching kids how to DJ and do music production. So I'm gonna actually implement those classes that I'm gonna be teaching these kids into my YouTube videos as well. So that should be pretty fun. Uh, so make sure you stay for that. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Um, this is just a quick view. Just let me know what you guys think in the comments below. The way that NPC and Akai is moving forward with everything. Let me know what you guys think. Um, also below, I'm going to have links. I did create a book that I think is going to be very beneficial for music producers and musicians. A lot of you guys use different DAW systems from NPCs, Ableton, Logic. You, sometimes you work with other collaborators. Sometimes you have hundreds of unfinished projects. And you know, you're trying to go through like, oh, remember I made that beat? But when did I make that beat? Or what sample did I use? So I made a book where you can kind of write down everything you do. Um, so it's a personal book. It's 120 pages. You can just fill in everything, uh, you know, from your BPMs, the genre that you're in, if you collaborate with anybody, what door you used, uh, and the date that you did it, the month that you did it in, and uh, how many total beats. So kind of like challenge yourself. Like, hey, okay, so this one week, the first week of January, let's just say New Year, um, I did this many beats, I did five beats, and then you can kind of keep track, and like, did I finish those five beats, and you go back and see what you finished, so it's a really cool book, and I think it's going to be very helpful for you guys, so make sure you, you cop that down below, I'll leave the link below for that too, so after all that being said, I hope you guys like this one, I'll see you in the next one, peace.